Hello and welcome back to, uh, well I'm not really going to call it N20, N plus 1 days anymore of MVVM Cross because I've kind of missed a few days. So instead of that we're going to call it N plus 1 videos and I'm carrying on and today is a bit of a different um, talk because today is all about, as you probably guessed, ninjas. So in particular today is about this project that a member of the community, Adrian Sudbury, also known as Schoolgeo, has produced and you can see he's um, produced a heck of a lot of stuff here. And what it is, is a plugin for Visual Studio. So I'm going to download that plugin. I've already got one version installed, but I'm going to download the latest. And you can download it, as you can see, from the extension gallery in Visual Studio. And it doesn't take long to download. And then once you've downloaded it, you can run it. And you have to accept the terms and conditions to run it. And what it's going to do is it's going to delete the copy that's already there and then start installing a new one. So it might take a little go to do this. And then we can take a look at what's actually in there. So, while that installs, it's removing the old one at the moment. While that installs, let me just show you a bit more. So, um, this is the source code for the entire plugin. So, if you do need to change something or if you do want to contribute something, a new idea to it, you can. But there's also quite a few blog posts he's done about it where you can see some of the features that he's enabled. And I'm just going to talk through like the simplest of the features, but there's plenty more in there. Um, and uh, it's really an awesome thing to take a look at. So hopefully this will uh, uninstall the old one. Gotta love these installers that do this wizard cross. It's just a little bit there. I don't know if you can see how much is left. Let me just show you. There it is. That's how much is left to go. And it's just refusing to do that last little bit. Anyway, so now at last it's installing the new one, and again it says it may take a few minutes, but this is, you know, real time, so um, hopefully it's not taking more than a minute or two to install the total. Even though while I'm recording it, it does sound and feel a bit slow. In the background it's launching Visual Studio and it is installing an extension, so if you don't have admin rights to your PC you won't be able to do this, and obviously you should always run some sort of virus checker to make sure that things aren't getting installed that shouldn't. Um, but other than that, hopefully uh, it's spinning up the fan, but hopefully it's uh, in. And then you can see it's installed. And what that means is when you run up Visual Studio, hopefully, and when you run it up, what you'll see is that as well as everything you normally get, you should, in the Tools menu, here it is, Tools, get this uh, Ninja Coder for MVVM Cross. And the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Add Projects. And this will ask you where you want to install things. And you can see at the moment it's asking me if I want to install an NDC. I don't. Uh, where I'd like to install is obviously an N plus 1. And I'd like to install an N, uh, N27. And this is Ninja. That's where I'd like to install it. And the project I'll call is Awesome. And you can see then we've got all these options about which projects to include. So I'm going to include all of them, because that's the sort of mood I'm in. I want to include everything. And hit OK. And what you'll see it does is, rather than just creating a single project, it goes off and creates lots of projects and a solution to wrap them. So you can see there's the awesome core. There's an awesome core test, which unfortunately, it's not really my style, is based on Microsoft testing rather than any unit, but that's cool. Um, then there's a droid, which will no doubt ask me about whether or not to upgrade. Then there's iOS. Then there's Windows Store, then there's Windows Phone, and then there's WPF. So you can see, hopefully, within a minute, you get all of these project types included. There's a little README file that Adrian's included as well about what's going on, which also wishes me a good day. Been American that, but okay. And you can see you get all these things. So now if you hit Build, Build Solution, and I've never done it with this version, but hopefully when you hit Build Solution, it goes off and it builds all of the projects. So you can see all of the builds um, built. So if we then look at one of these, so if we go to the WPF one and run it up, then what we'll see is that we have a WPF application working with data binding. So if you remove part of this tab away, the data binding works. So all this is, if you look at the view model, is it's a very simple view model with kind of an example command and an example property in there. Um, I don't really like this uh, particular syntax file, but I understand if you're working with um, with style cop and, and those kind of 
settings that are officially there about make sure you use usings inside the namespace, etc. And this is a brilliant way of starting, so it's cool. Um, so that's uh, uh, WPF shown, and you can see it's up and running. And if we were to change this code, it would change as well. Um, Windows Store, if we run that one up as well, let's just see what happens. And again, you get the same application. If you delete a bit and tab away, you've got Windows Store running. That's brilliant. So uh, let's see what else we've got here. Windows Phone. So in order to run Windows Phone on my setup, I will need to change the emulator to 7.1. So let's do that and then run it up. Okay, so that'll take a few seconds to run up. Um, while that runs up, let's just take a look at what else it created. So we've got this... Uh, this example um, core here, it looks like it's included the messenger plugin by default, which is a pretty good thing to do. The app is pretty neat there and pretty simple. Um, we've also got the, the view model and that inherits from a base view model, which is a good practice to do. Um, and then you can see that it's also referenced the necessary NVVM cross library. So that's a brilliant starting place. Um, how is our boot going? It's still coming along. And if you take a look at any of these projects, then again, or each of them has their um, assemblies pulled in, and each of them has kind of the setup and the views that you would expect. So it's a really easy starting place. So hopefully, this is now deploying with Windows Phone. And hopefully, if we delete a bit here, oh, hang on, that's uh, deployed to the wrong thing. Maybe that's a, uh, a Visual Studio bug. If I deploy from Windows Phone, and then go to Windows Phone, then hopefully we see the UI we're expecting, and I don't have a keyboard, so I can get one. And if I delete and then tab away, you can see the data bindings working, so that's a brilliant starting place. Um, tests, we didn't really look at, but you can see um, just has kind of an empty test view model, so there's code to put in there if you want to uh, do some testing. But I think personally I'd probably switch to any unit on this one, um, just because it's more portable and because we've got kind of a base library to help that. Um, if we then look at Droid, um, then let me uh, build Droid and run it up on an emulator. So this will take a little second for the emulator to start. So let's start up the Intel one. Then hopefully what we should see when we're running up Droid, um, I'm just going to cancel that for a second and then come back to it when it started. Uh, what we should see in Droid is you've got your setup that you kind of expect, you've got the splash screen, your linker please include, which means you know you won't lose anything if um, you turn linking on. And then you've got a first view, which hopefully has got no code behind at all. That inherits from a base view. Again, a very good practice to put in place. Um, and then in resources, we've kind of got layout. And layout just has clean data binding in it. So it's really nice from that point of view. How is our emulator coming along? Very slowly. Still thinking about how to start. But hopefully we'll start any moment now. Sorry, this was a clean boot and a clean install, as you saw. So um, it does take a few seconds to get running. Right, so that's booted. And if we open it, slide to open, then we should now be able to run this. And if we run it up, debug start new. Ah, there it was. And I just killed it by hitting refresh. That may Okay, so now I should be able to deploy to that emulator. And hopefully it's packaging the application deploying it across, synchronizing assemblies, and hopefully we should see that same data binding working. So there it is, and if we delete a few characters, you can see the data binding working brilliant. Okay, so there's one last platform to see, and that's Android iOS. So if we set that as a startup project, we choose the iPhone simulator, we get rid of whatever that horrible thing is there from the, uh, from the Mac build server, and then we hit start new. Then hopefully what we should see is it talk to the Mac? So let's just see if it's talking to it. Well, the build worked. The Mac server log. Okay, so it's doing something. So I better um, get type VNC up, which is the way I do the viewing. And hopefully it's on that IP address. And it's beaten me to it. I can see on the remote screen. What happened to remote VNC? Uh, so I haven't managed to connect. Let me just try again. Type, whoops, type VNC. Connect. Okay, so it doesn't want to connect today. Um, I wonder if it's on a different IP address. Let me just find out. 
Excuse me while I look at IF config. And it switched to 07, so that's the problem. So now it's coming back. I'll type in the password of password. Get rid of that one, that was because I started two at the same time. And now we're in, we just need to open up the next password screen. That's right. And you can see here running is the app that we've just uh, set up. So if I tap on one of these, it's got a keyboard. And you can see if I start typing, then the data binding is working. So hopefully you can see that within 15 minutes, within 10 minutes maybe, we have five different apps up and running sharing the core PCL from a fresh install of the Ninja Coder. So that's pretty awesome. But let's just see what else we can get running quickly, because that's not that much for demo. So let's pretend that we need to add a um, value converter. So let's see what we can. Let's add a length value converter to um, our um, core project, because we want to share this code. So we're going to add that value converter, and it's going to be an MVX value converter, and it's going to be from string to, oops, from string to int. And this is going to be our standard kind of example. So we're going to override convert. And what we'll do is if value equals equals null, we'll return zero. Otherwise, we'll return value.length. So that's a value converter. And let's also use this my command wherever it is. So my command was we're actually just changing a view model here. That's not very exciting. So let's do a my property equals uh, n equals 27. Yeah, so that's uh, what we're going to change our command to. And what we should then be able to do is just use that. So if we go to first view, for example, then what we'd like to do is we'll add another text view in this Android sample. And in this Android sample, we'll do a text my property converter equals length. So we use that value converter. And then let's also add a button here. And what we'll do is we will bind the button's text to be go. Uh, we'll bind it to n27. And what we'll do is we'll bind the click on that to my command. So we're just showing how quickly we can get this up and running. And uh, let's run that up just to prove it can run on Android. See, I think I may just cancel out of that. There is some problems with some of the linking. If you take a look at the configuration, let's just show you that. Yeah, that's going to be that. If you take a look at the configuration manager for this, you'll see that in certain configurations it doesn't build everything. So let me just um, click a few things, come out of there and do... Uh, I'm just going to make sure I manually build these things. That's a build. Hopefully, uh, it's a rebuild, maybe. Force it to build. Okay, so that's built that. So now if I run this up, hopefully it will build and run. It's going to go straight to the emulator. Let's see. Yeah, if you do see any problems with kind of just insane things not working, check that you've got that configuration set up because that's it. So now we've got this. Um, our previous data binding still works if we start deleting things. Um, you can see the length converter is working. And if we hit n equals 27, you can see the command is working as well. So, you know, that's a value converter added and a um, and a button click a command added really quickly. And you can see if it's working. That's brilliant. Um, so let's see if we can do the same sort of thing. I won't bother showing the, the Windows platforms because you all know how to do those. But let's just add something to the iOS as well, just as a demonstration. So let's do, let's um, change this text field. We don't really need both. So that the conversion is going to show this length. And let's also add a binding to this text field. Ah, no, hang on, sorry, we don't want that. It's the label we want to apply the conversion to. And let's also bind a tap event, which is actually a tap gesture, just for those of you who are um, interested. Um, so this is going to be a tap event, tap gesture, on the label. And we're going to bind that to my command. And then let's see whether or not this runs up. So we're going to go debug, start new. And hopefully it will go over to our uh, Mac saying build succeeded. Is it deploying? Is it thinking about it? Oops. Hopefully it's thinking about deploying in the background. Yep, here it goes. 
So this is now deploying, and you can see that you know if we change some of the text, then the length converter works. And if we tap on there, you can see the command is, is invoked. Yeah, so that's data binding working uh, for, a, for a value converter and for a command. So that is the Ninja Coder. That was a whistle -top stop tour of it. You can see how quickly you can create these projects. There are some downsides to using this, which is you're not using NuGet, so it's a bit difficult, more difficult to update. But in terms of just writing a quick test harness, like you can do it within a minute and have five platforms. So that is stunning, absolutely stunning. So if you see me talking in the next few months, then I expect to see me demoing using the Ninja Coder, definitely. Um, you can also see there's all sorts of other things here about options, about how you can add new view models and views and plugins and converters and all sorts of other things. I don't know half of this. Um, there is also, if you now go to File New after installing this, stop running that. If you go to File New, then you will now see that you also get this NVVM cross option with these templates, so you don't have to run the other thing. You can create them a project at a time. Again, totally awesome. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, the links for this are all on that web page. So particularly go to GitHub, a Sudbury, Ninja Coder for NVVM Cross, and from there you'll find the source code, you'll find the links about how to install things. Obviously, I'll put them on the post for M plus one as well. But that is it. That is totally awesome. That is n equals 27. Um, and it's a really short one, but I hope that you can see the value you can get there from having five platforms running within a few minutes. So I hope you like that. I hope you find that awesome. Um, and I'll be back soon with n equals 28. Ninja.